Nelson Farms. I'm here again in the kitchen and I'm, we're, today we're going to talk about canning. So I got started canning really just like a year or two ago and there are some things that I didn't know then that I really wish I did know. So that's why I wanted to come on and just kind of give you guys an introduction onto some equipment that you're going to need and why you might need certain types of equipment for different foods that you're canning. Go ahead and subscribe so that you can watch this later and save this. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is this Ball Home Preserving book. This is the book that is like my Bible for canning. And if you're gonna get into canning at all, I highly recommend you get this book. This is the one, one thing I would say get first. So a few years ago, well, it might've been last year, we actually had several deer in the freezer. Uh, all the meat was in there, ready to go. And we started smelling something when we were like pulling in our garage, our freezer is in our garage. And after about a week of the smell getting worse and worse and worse, I thought I had looked in that freezer and I looked in the freezer and y'all, the freezer had been off and the meat was gone. So we lost at least two whole deer, probably more than that. It was like all rotten. So A, it was disgusting and it was nasty to clean up. But the lesson we learned from that is not to put all of our eggs in one basket, so to speak. And so since then, we've started canning a lot of things instead of just depending on the freezer for some of the things. So as you'll see in the book, there are several different types of canning. One type is pressure canning, and this is a pressure canner. The other type is water bath or steam canning, and that's these two pieces. So I'm gonna start with pressure canning first because I've already mentioned meat and how we can meat, we can broth, we can veggies. For those things, you're gonna need a pressure canner. So what you can in which one of these things is based on the acidity level of the foods. And if you don't know, if you don't care to know, then just look in your book. It's gonna tell you what, like which equipment you need to use. But just think uh, most vegetables and all meats are gonna need to be um, canned in this pressure canner. So this is a little bit um, scary to some people, um, but don't let it be. I was a newbie when I started with this, but I'm completely comfortable with it. So you're gonna see that it has a really large inside. It can hold probably seven quarts, easy. There's also a pressure gauge here, and then there's some safety features. So as long as you uh, keep the uh, safety guidelines close by, I always have this close by, you're gonna be fine, but you do have to follow the guidelines. One thing I would say, if you're on a budget, but you're wanting to start canning, this is the canner that I would get because yes, it's a pressure canner, but you can also use this as a water bath canner. So this can actually be your only canner if it's all that you have. Ideally, that's not the case. This is big, it's heavy, it can be messy. So I like to use these other ones if possible. But again, if you're on a budget, you can only get one to get started. I would get this one and I get the, or I have the Presto one. I think this is a really good one. Now let's talk about water bath canning. Water bath canning is typically for your fruits. So when you think of like jams and jellies and pickles and like all that kind of thing, this is gonna be your water bath canning. So water bath canning to me is a lot easier, it's faster and it's less messy but you have a few options with water bath canning. The first option is a really big water bath canner. It looks like this. It's relatively cheap, but it's really big. It requires a lot of water and it's pretty messy in my opinion. Like the water is gonna boil everywhere. It's just not really practical. It's heavy. If you have a glass um, stove top like I do, you gotta be like careful with it. So this is good, but it's not my favorite. The other option I mentioned earlier is you can make this pressure canner do the same thing that the water bath canner does. Just put water in it, but it's already got a bottom in it. So you can use this just like you would use this one. It's just a little bit smaller. But I'm going to tell you something that I found this year that is like the best thing ever. It's this steam canner. So to me, this is my favorite way to water bath can, even though it's really steam canning. So let me show you how it works. So I was a little hesitant to try the steam canner because it's just like one more thing to buy, one more thing to learn, one more thing to store. 
but I love it and I highly recommend it. In fact, I love it more, way more than the water bath canner. So I would, I would feel confident saying, I think you'll love it. So this is the one I got, if you wanna go get one. I got this one off Amazon um, and it has, it has done beautifully. So again, this is gonna be for your jams and your jellies. And let me show you a little bit about how it works so you can see the difference. So instead of having like tons of water and it being super heavy, you, sip, you put water in here and you only fill it to this, like you fill it this high and then you set that on the oven and then, or on the stove and when it gets hot, then you start, you start canning. So after you have the appropriate amount of water in there, you put your jars in there and then you set this top on it and you do have to watch the pressure with this one, but then there's no like rolling boils and it's not like messy and loud and hot and sweaty. So it's just a lot easier. There are a few things you have to do differently with this one that I wanna tell you about though. So here you can see that it does have a pressure gauge and that is important because you need to know the zone that you live in because that's gonna determine the different pressures that you cook at. Um, you're also going to have to do an initial temperature indicator test, but the instructions are literally right here in this booklet. What? The booklet makes it super easy to get started with this. Okay, so when you're actually ready to use this steam canner and you place your jars in, you place them around, but I'm going to let you know right now, if you fill it full, it's kind of hard to get the top on. So ideally, you put one of the pint jars in there and the other's cord. That way they'll fit a little bit easier. You might have to just shimmy them around a little bit, um, but when you put this on and you get a pressure gauge up to where it needs to, to be, that's when you're gonna start the timer. And the beauty of this is you can, like you, you leave it in here the same amount of time you would the water bath canner. So you don't have to do any weird conversions. If it's a, a 15 minute, cook in the water bath, it's going to be 15 minutes in here. You just have to wait till it gets up to the right pressure point here. Okay, the other things you're going to need to get started are some jars. So you can a lot of times find these at thrift stores, consignment stores, yard sales, um, your grandma, like your grandma's attic. You can find used ones and that's fine. Just wash them really good before you use them. What you cannot uh, use over and over are these lids. You have to buy them new, the sealing part. You can use the screw tops over and over, but the sealers you have to buy brand new. So stock up on those when you can, because sometimes stores will be out of them close to canning season. You also will probably need canning salt, because a lot of recipes calls for canning salt, and citric acid. Now, if you don't wanna use citric acid, a lot of times you can use lemon juice in lieu of this, uh, you can do it either way. I actually prefer the lemon juice, but I'll use either depending on what I have. So that's about all you need to get started canning. If you have any questions, let me know and I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.